The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Trails of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Saparis Kakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trolls of Nomads episode presents The medieval city of Hanbalik, present-day Beijing, was built according to the design of the ancestor of modern Kazakhs, El Kidur. What evidence suggests this? Did the Great Wall of China protect the inhabitants of the Middle Kingdom from the raids of Turkic tribes? What is the peculiarity of the black kumis prepared by the Kipchaks of the Yuan Empire? Participants in the scientific expedition, Trails of Nomads, have arrived in China. The Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region was the first stop. Further scientists went to the capital of China. The ancestors of modern Kazakhs left an invaluable legacy here. The city of Dadu, built by the Turks under Kublai Khan, is one of the examples. Beijing was erected at that place. Kublai <laughs> We visited the city of Shangdu, built during the reign of Kublai Khan, and now we are in the city of Dadu. Dadu is also called the Great City. Kublai Khan did not recognize the palaces of the former emperors, so he built new ones for himself. Among them is Dadu in the center of Beijing. Now we see only a small part of the city. It was reconstructed. The Yuan Empire, founded by Kublai Khan, had two capitals. The summer residence is Shangdu, and the winter residence of Khan's city was Dadu. In Chinese Dadu, in Turkic, Hanbalik. Famous traveler Marco Polo wrote that Kublai Khan lived in Dadu only in the winter months. The great palace of the emperor was located in Hanbalik. Marco Polo was struck by its architecture and beauty. He did not find examples for comparison when he talked about this unique structure. In his opinion, no one could build better. Both Dadu and Shangdu are unique cities that appeared thanks to the ancestors of the Kazakhs. Stone sculptures are like a testimony about it. <laughs> We see architects who built a city, sculptors, a monument to Kublai Khan himself. Nearby are our ancestors, immigrants from the Turkic tribes, scientists, military leaders, warriors. All of them arrived here together with Kublai Khan. They were engaged in political and public affairs and always accompanied the emperor. The design of the city of Hanbalik was prepared by a native of the Kazakh steppe named Elkider. In modern terms, he was the minister of construction in the empire of Kublai Khan. This is confirmed by information from medieval manuscripts. Elkider founded an area called Kudun in Hanbalik. The word comes from the Kazakh Kudek, which in translation means a well. The pronunciation was distorted and the area was called Hudun. To begin construction and attract people, it was necessary to solve the issue of providing drinking water. El Kader did this with the help of wells. Scientists from Beijing University and the Chinese Construction Academy found out that the first well was in the Beijing Wanfujing area. This is another fact confirming the important role of the Turks in the development of the Yuan Empire. The Turks 
мындай бийлик басына отурган жаягы бир 100 жылдай арасында 100ден астам In the era of the Yuan Empire, representatives of Turkic tribes who came from Central Asia ruled here. Their reign lasted for a hundred years. There were mostly Kipchaks and also Karluks, Naimans, Konrads, Argans, Mangats. All of them are now Kazakh clans. All provinces in the empire were mainly ruled by Kipchaks, Kanglis and Naimans, including the southern China. Our ancestors led the most developed provinces and regions. <laughs> Деңиз жагасындагы теңде осы Кытайдың дамыған өлкөлөрү ана деңиз жагасындагы өлкөлөр го областтар. Сөз жерлерде жерлик өкмөттүн биринчи акимы болуп жүргөндө солардын урпактары го. The ancestors of the Kazakhs were strong warriors both on land and at sea. They used the sea routes not only for military purposes but also for the development of agriculture and trade. Strong trade and economic relations were established with the countries of South Asia and Africa. The Turks connected the Chinese regions through channels. A waterway was laid from Hanbalik to Hangzhou. A north-south transport corridor has appeared. The hydraulic structure, which was called the Great Canal, is still working and contributing to the economic development of the country. Now it connects two major Chinese ports of Shanghai and Tianjin. About 10 million tons of various cargo passes annually along this way. Yuan Birinci kol başısı, ikinci kol başısı, nemesi memleketten buna... During the era of the Yuan Empire, only Kipchaks held the positions of the army commander, second commander and other high posts in the government. Of these, an army was formed that defended Han Balik. They obeyed only the Han. All his bodyguards were also Kipchaks. Kipchaks were co-in-laws of the ruler. The emperor married off his daughters to the Kipchaks. Twice when the ruler was removed from the throne, the Kipchaks supported him and returned the throne. The descendants of Genghis Khan were heirs to the throne. Representatives of Turkic tribes helped them in everything. They carried out political and economic reforms and made China a centralized state. All this contributed to the development of trade and the transformation of the state into a great empire. The foundation of today's Chinese power was laid precisely then. The contribution of the Turkic peoples to the formation of Chinese civilization is undeniable. Local scientists pay special attention to this issue. Research began in the 90s of the last century. There are a lot of materials for research compared to other countries. There are a lot of ancient manuscripts in China. The archives keep important information regarding our ancestors. Another unique place visited by the expedition members is the Great Wall of China. The most popular site among tourists is Badaling. About 10 million people visit it annually. It was the last stage of the construction of the wall. Construction was carried out in the 14th to 17th centuries, during the period of the Ming Empire. And the first break of this grandiose structure was laid back in the 5th to 3rd centuries BC. The dominance of the Huns in the north and the danger emanating from them became the reason for the beginning of the construction of the defensive fortifications. This means that the relationship between the Chinese and the ancestors of the Kazakhs goes back to ancient times. 
The construction of the Great Wall of China began 2,500 years ago. At that time, there were several different kingdoms on Chinese land. The largest of them were Qin, Wei, Yan, Zhao. All these kingdoms built stone fortresses on their border. Later in the 3rd century BC, the ruler of the Qin dynasty, Shi Wang, united all these fortifications and began the construction of the Great Wall. So they wanted to protect themselves from the formidable northern neighbors, the Huns. The Huns were most powerful under the reign of Tanirkut. Some historical sources say that all nomadic tribes obeyed them, and the Chinese ruling dynasties over the years paid taxes to the Huns. At that time, the Chinese kingdom of Qin was considered one of the most developed states in the world. However, even their military could not resist the Huns. That is why the Chinese began to build the Great Wall. It took 2,200 years. Incredible efforts were made to build this wall. A lot of people died. It was not easy. The total length of the wall is 6,500 kilometers and the width reaches 7 meters. The length of the Great Wall of China exceeds six and a half thousand kilometers. Its initial length exceeded 21,000 kilometers. Now scientists adhere to such a version. Earlier, when the calculating of length of wall only the part which was built during the reign of the Ming Dynasty in the 14th to 17th centuries was taken into account. Now tourists see only this part. The rest is poorly preserved. The unique architectural structure, which became a great historical heritage, was built to protect the land against the Huns and Turkic tribes. But despite the length and power, it did not stop the conquerors. Every year, millions of tourists from different parts of the world come to look at the wall, and the local treasury is replenished accordingly. <laughs> The wall could not stop our ancestors. Turkic tribes easily overcame it. The Mongol army passed through the gates and conquered China without any difficulties. As a result, the grandson of Genghis Khan Kublai, who became the ruler, unified the country and all the scattered kingdoms became a single state. Kublai had his own reason for invading China. He founded the Yuan Empire in alliance with the Turks. Chinese dynasty knew Turks, descendants of the Huns, for a long time. Their ancestors dominated this territory, collected taxes. And there were even times when the Turks were behind the creation of Chinese empires. For example, the founder of the Tang Empire, Li Yuan, comes from Turkic tribes. His entourage was also Turkic Kipchak. Our ancestors occupied the highest posts in the empire. Historical monuments testify to all this. Stone slabs with inscriptions were found on the banks of the Selenga River. All these details are carved on the stone. The Chinese, known about the warlike Turks, always sought to establish diplomatic relations with them. The Chinese respect for the Turks is evidenced by one historical fact. When the Turkic ruler Kultagin died, the Chinese perceived a loss as their mourning. <laughs> During the second Turkic Khaganate, that is, in the 8th century, Kultagin died. To express condolences to the neighbors, the Chinese emperor sent a delegation of 500 people to the Turks. Among them were more than a hundred masters, masons, sculptors. It was they who installed the tombstone over the grave of Kultagin. Inscriptions on three sides of the stone were made in three languages. <laughs> The inscriptions on the stone slab point to the fact that Kipchak Turks, Mongols and Tungus Manjuras ruled in the states in China at all times, except the period of the Khan and Ming dynasties. In the Celestial Empire, a nomadic civilization was widespread. 
A special contribution to the development of modern Chinese culture was made by the Kipchak Turks. Here is just one example. Until today, a 12-year calendar has been used in China in the Pacific. The cycle of 12 years appeared initially among the Turks and was called Anbir Morshal. It was an original Turkic calendar. Later, many Turkic tribes in China assimilated with the local peoples. Some, of course, know that their ancestors are Turks. For example, Harachins. Historians attribute them to the descendants of the Kipchak tribes. The Karachins are descendants of the Kipchaks, who had great authority in the Yuan Empire created by Kublai. Now they live in the Chinese provinces of Liaoning, Hebei, and Inner Mongolia. According to assumptions, their population reaches about 700,000. However, no one can name the exact figure. Most of the Karachins assimilated with the local population. Ethnonym Karachin is associated with the economy that this people led. All men of the tribe were engaged in horse breeding. They grazed thoroughbred horses of Kublai Khan. And the women gave water to the mares and prepared a special kumis, which only noble people were treated to in the imperial palace. The drink was called black kumis, thanks to which the ethnonym Karachin appeared. <laughs> The Karachins had a special position at the Imperial Palace of Yuan. As the famous traveler Marco Polo wrote, Kublai Han had 10,000 white, thoroughbred mares on his personal farm. Karachins watched them. Using high technology, they prepared a unique kumis. In general, there were two types of this drink, white and black. Only Karachins could cook black kumis. Kumis in the Yuan Empire was considered the main drink. During government events and holy holidays, representatives of the Khan dynasty and their entourage drank black kumis. This drink was also offered to foreign guests and ambassadors. The main secret was the sophisticated cooking technology. A large amount of ordinary kumis collected over several days was mixed with fresh mare's milk. All this was whipped for a long time. Over one night it was left to settle. During this time, the fat part of kumis settled on the bottom of the dishes and the liquid part rose up. Therefore, this kumis was called black. There are a lot of representatives of Turkic peoples in China. The southern part of the Great Wall of China is completely inhabited by the descendants of the Huns and Turks. They now speak Chinese and adhere to local traditions. But there are those among them who have not forgotten their long-standing ancestors, the Turks. Participants in the scientific expedition traveled to China and collected a lot of materials relating to the forefathers. In addition, negotiations were held with local scientists, an agreement was reached on joint research. The staff of the University of Inner Mongolia is ready for test cooperation with Kazakhstan's historians. Our research center has collected a lot of information about the period of the Turks, Huns, Sanbi, Dunhu. We are ready to share valuable information with our Kazakh colleagues. And I'm sure that in the near future, we will also begin joint historical research. We highly appreciate the work of the Kazakh Scientific Expedition. The activities of the expedition Trails of Nomads in China will help determine the degree of influence of our ancestors on the region. The work of scientists will undoubtedly contribute to the formation of a real picture of the past. The ancestors of the Kazakhs made an invaluable contribution to the development of the entire world civilization. The participants of the scientific caravan are sure. I would like to appeal to the youth. We need to know our history. Whether it is good or bad is our past. Of course, the Chinese can look at it from a different angle and we can look at it from a different angle, but in any case, no one can change history. But the people who do not know their history have no future. The ancestors of the Kazakhs more than once radically changed the political and economic situation in the Eurasian continent. And the history of China is one of the examples. The work of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads in East Asia is nearing completion. Next stop is North America. What are the similarities of Indians living there and the Kazakhs? How true is the assertion that Alta is also the ancestral home of the Indians? Scientists will try to find answers to these questions. We will tell you the details of the trip in the next program.